houses have been getting bigger for like uh, 50 years now, but about a year or two ago, it leveled off and actually went down for the first time in five decades. People are starting to get a clue, I think. People are understanding that excess is not necessarily a luxury. It's really a burden, it's a liability. To, I mean, people are living in 4,000 and 6,000 square foot debtor's prisons, and they spend 30 years, sometimes more, paying off for more stuff and space than they really need. You don't need so many shoes on the porch. I've been called the Imelda Marcos of tiny house people because I have so many shoes in a small space. I started living small because it's just so wasteful for me, a person with such minimal needs, to live in a large house. The average American house puts out like 18 tons worth of greenhouse gases per year these days. There are a lot of different ways to save energy and to not produce a lot of waste, but the easiest, best, most efficient one is just to not use extra stuff. I've got my little entertaining area over here. I've had nine people in here. I mean, I've had more than that, but I've actually had nine people sitting in here. Actually, I was raised in a 4,000 square foot house and my sister and I were in charge of cleaning the house. So that was probably part of my decision too, was just wanting a more luxurious lifestyle. I mean, we couldn't even afford to really heat the house entirely. They call my fireplace a fireplace. It's a boat fireplace because you can see the flames, but in any case, it works really well for this space. The desk is where I spend most of my waking hours. And then I have a lot of storage per square foot because even though it's a hundred square feet, I did feel like I wanted some stuff. So it's important. I mean, I've been in mansions where they don't have enough storage space. So that's the hardest part of designing a small house is actually deciding what is necessary, just figuring out what it is you need to be happy. Here's some more storage space, gotta have hanging clothes. In my case, it took a while, it took a couple years to, to really figure out what it is I wanted to get rid of. And so once I had done that, by gradually paring down and living in smaller and smaller houses, I, I did come to live in a very small house with very little and I'm totally happy. I don't miss anything at all. More storage here, I like shallow shelves so you don't have to dig deep for stuff. This is only eight feet by 12 feet. So this is like a hundred square feet. I've been living in houses of this size and smaller for about 10 years now. I have a really primitive plumbing system in this house, but I usually put in more elaborate plumbing when I design other people's houses. I keep my little fridge under the counter and I even keep a little toaster oven on top of that. And you know, if I wanted to go with a bigger fridge, I could fill up this space more. Basically, I just allocated only as much space as I need to cook, which isn't much. There's a bathroom right here. The bathroom is just two feet by four feet. It's what is called a wet bath, so the bathroom is the shower. I just seal the whole thing up when I take a shower, and it's, it's great. The entire bathroom would get wet. If I didn't have a plastic curtain that actually goes over the toilet, even that would get wet. It drains straight out the floor. My plumbing is really primitive even for the shower, so it's just a gravity-fed system where the water falls from the loft. It's a little labor intensive as far as the shower goes, mm -hmm. which is why I usually do other things for different people when I'm designing for them. But, you know, I have to haul water in and put it in the tank upstairs. So I like to go to the gym a lot for that reason. <laughs> Keeps me healthy. And up here's the uh, ladder. It usually stores over here, but I pull it out and I can just go up to the sleeping loft. When I design family houses, you know, houses for more than one person, I always make sure that there's a bedroom for every intended occupant. It's nice to have private space for everybody in the household if you're gonna live in tight quarters. The bed takes up most of the loft. This is where I sleep. Um, and at the other end, I've just got a lot of storage space. More storage, can never have enough of that. Probably the most difficult part about living in this small house is making the bed. So I just don't make the bed, unless somebody's showing up with a camera. <laughs> In which case, I don't even really make the bed. I just throw the covers up over the bed. One other reason why I live small is I prefer quality over quantity. And I really couldn't afford a large house with the kind of features I have in my small house. So by minimizing the footprint, I, I put some of that money saved into quality materials and really meticulous design. It's hard to design a really large house the way you can design a small house because you can put so much into the details when you're designing small. When I first drove up, it looked real big. <laughs> and I came over here, I couldn't believe it. I thought it was like twice that wide. 
<laughs> it seems like the tiny house market is full of do-it-yourselfers. I sell plans and build them. Most people tend to buy our houses as plans and then build them themselves. I always say anybody could do it because when I built my first one, I didn't know what I was doing. This house was about $17,000 in materials and then it took me about 500 hours in total to build. It is actually more expensive per square foot to build small because you still got the expensive core, but I think it's still the cheapest house in the entire county. There are wheels on this house. I like it that way because I can put it anywhere I want. To get around building codes, I made it a travel trailer. According to building code, you have to build you know, to a certain size, at least in most populated areas. Those were really pushed forward by the housing industry and the insurance industries back in the 70s and 80s when profits were leveling off and they figured, well, we can just sell more house if we convince people that they need them. So the housing authorities did take up these, these codes. I recently did have to buy a house with my wife. I got married a year ago, we're gonna have a baby. We figured three people in 100 square feet was a bit tight. So now we have a 500 square foot house next to my 100 square foot house. So 600 square feet between three people. And so many of the houses built today are built as these little universes unto themselves. Like everybody feels like they have to have a nightclub designed for 40 and a kitchen stock for the same. Ultimately, you know, I figure with the money I save on mortgage, I can rent out the Holiday Inn if I want to have a huge party.